Hi everybody, I'm Ali Tabakoli and this is part 8 of our UMM tutorial series. In this part, we want to talk about timing diagram. So if you're ready, let's get started. Timing diagram, huh? It leads different actions that are going to happen for the piece of project that we're going to draw the diagram for and shows how long it takes each action to be processed and when each of them will be triggered. Actually, in timing diagram, we are going to demonstrate a process, for example, a teaching process, and uh, like a sequence or a communication diagrams, in a process uh, uh, there are some participants that are taking part in it. So, in timing diagram, we need to define the different states uh, of each process and uh, uh, we demonstrate uh, how long each uh, uh, states of those uh, participants are going to take. And just like the object diagram, we can draw a couple of timing diagrams for different scenarios for just one piece of our project because different states may happen in different scenarios, obviously. So here is an example of a timing diagram. Uh, here are our uh, participants and uh, each of these participants have different states. Uh, we uh, actually uh, different specify those states in order like this and uh, each uh, state may take uh, uh, a specified time so we can uh, specify that with a lifeline and we also have timing constraints which I will explain it later and here is uh, the alternative notation for a timing diagram uh, this timing diagram is the same as this timing diagram. It is up to you that you prefer which notation uh, the most. So that's it. Before we get into more details, let's see for whom a uh, timing diagram is. It's for system designers and developers. Its purpose, define the timing between different states in the system and describe when events occur, how long it takes for participant to react and how long it takes for each individual interaction to get completed. Important elements, participants, obviously, it's an object most of the time, just like the sequence and communication diagrams and the states, which we can call them actions too. Points to consider. If an object doesn't have any major interactions or states, then there's no reason to draw that object in a timing diagram, just like uh, uh, how we draw participants in a uh, sequence or communication diagram. We only draw the participants that are taking part in the process, actually, not the unnecessary participants. And events and messages will be shown in the same way on a timing diagram because uh, their difference is not as important as it is on the sequence diagram. They will be shown only to trigger the state changes from one participant to another. So we can also uh, show uh, events and messages just like how we show them in sequence or communication diagram. We can write the message and the method that is going to be called or we can also dismiss them and they are not so much important in a timing diagram because in timing diagram we are actually going to demonstrate and focus on the uh, how much time uh, each state of the participants are going to take so the time is important here rather than the sequ sequence of the messages flow all right, what are the steps? The first step is to find states. I mean, different actions that are going to happen one after another in our system. We can use the use case description and its main flow here. And then find the participants that these actions belong to. And then match these states to participants. 
actually we can use the main flow of the use case diagram and then uh, we know that what is going to happen step by step so that our process can happen successfully then we know uh, we have to find that what participants are going to take in part so that uh, this process can happen and then match these states to the participants we actually need to find out what states a participant has in the process and then we start drawing the time timing diagram we draw a table which contains participants in each row the order of the participant in, in rows is important so in what order they should be it's easy we have already the sequence diagram and all of the participants are listed at the top of that diagram right so we only need to rotate the sequence diagram 90 degrees counterclockwise so we already have the participant listed we rotate them and we will have them in a for our timing diagram now we start the lifetime line of the first action of the first participant that starts the system. For example, for a teaching process, the teacher uh, participant is the first participant that is going to start the process of teaching. As soon as we reach an event or a message, we draw it and connect it to the above participant. In, the, in a special and states of the teacher participant the teacher participant causes the student participant to change its state so uh, we draw it and we draw uh, the message and connect it to the above participant which in our example is the student then we move on and show uh, by using the life timeline, how long it takes each state of a participant to change to another state. So let's go and take a look at it. Yes. As we know, we already have had the sequence diagram for the teaching process. So drawing the timing diagram for the teaching process is much more easier. So... Uh, as we have mentioned, we know the participants in the sequence diagram. So for our timing diagram, we just need to uh, rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise to have them in order. Because the order of the participants in the timing diagram is really important. Why? Because the uh, participant that is going to start the process is actually needs to be at the bottom so that when we are uh, drawing the life line uh, life timelines and uh, when a message call affects an other participant's state to, to change we can demonstrate that easily here we are also listing different states of the participant here is the different states of student participant different states for the course participants the order of these states uh, is also important for example in a teaching process the teacher teachers states uh, will change from idle to teaching state and then the teaching state will change to giving exercise and it changed the, then to reviewing then ask questions and then give summary and give exam this is also true about the student participant it's at first in the idle state the idle state will change to learn and then it will change to memorize then it will change to answer questions and finally take exam the course participant is also the same it's first in the idle state and then it will be changed to the lesson added state now by lifelines like these we can actually show that how long each state takes 
and when exactly a state changes to another one. For demonstrating time, we have used the variable t here. t can be anything. It can be seconds, it can be minutes, or anything else. It actually depends on our project and our purpose. So, in our example here, it actually, as soon as the uh, teaching process gets started, it takes one T so that the idle state of the teacher participant changes to the teaching state. Then the teach method will be called and this method call will cause the idle state of the student participant change to the learn state. And then another method will be called as, um, yes, I didn't write down this method's name here in my timing diagram because I already have it in my sequence diagram. So I can write it down or leave it uh, just like what I have done in this example. So anyway, this new method's call will cause the idle state of the course participant to change to the lesson added state. And by timing constraints, I can show that how long the lesson added state is going to stay. So here I'm saying that it, will, it would stay 1t to 1t plus 5 seconds. I mean, uh, 5 seconds or less. So, that's it. We can show all of the other states, uh, uh, I mean, how long all of the other states are going to stay in their position and when they will change to another state. Uh, let's take a look at the timing constraints. If we say t like this, that it means that the duration of event or state is equal to the t value of t. Uh, this uh, we have explained it five seconds or less we can also show it like that it's equivalent to the above one if we, we write this timing constraint we mean that more than five seconds and less than 10 seconds and this means that the value of t multiple five times and uh, this is also another uh, alternative notation to the timing diagram this is the same as the above timing diagram, so uh, we can actually see, see our participants here and see that how long each state is going to state and when exactly each one will change to another state for each participant. So that's all there is to a timing diagram. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, follow the next part of our tutorial to see the upcoming diagrams. Please don't forget to subscribe and to be notified of our upcoming tutorials. So see you there.